Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at New Beginning Christian Faith Center, where we come to lift up the name of Jesus, where truly it is all about God. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Wherever you are right now, call a friend, call someone. Let them know the word is coming forth. Let them know that we're uniting together to worship, to lift up the name of Christ. Whether you're in your living room, whether you're in your kitchen, uh, come on, let's just give God some praise for he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same the name of our lord is worthy to be praised oh hallelujah oh hallelujah i'm excited about what god's gonna do today i'm excited about the word on today are you excited I'm excited about the move of God. Hallelujah. We will be calling up our praise team, which will be led by Sister Marsha and Sister Manzella. Before the praise team comes, we will have Minister Ganey come up with a word of prayer. And immediately after the praise team, we will be getting the word of God from El Bishop. Hatley, amen. Praise God. Come on, let's give God some praise. Praise the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. We come in great expectation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just want you to set your faith. Because God's going to meet your need. Amen. We just ask you to have faith. Hallelujah. Stretch out and believe God on today for whatever you need. God's got it. And we come asking and we're asking in faith. Oh, my shot. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we say thank you on today. God, we come with a humble heart. Oh, God, we come to seek your face on today, God. God, we just say thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you, God, for clothing us in our right mind again, God. Thank you for the use of our limbs, oh, most shy. Oh, God, we give you praise, God. We just want to tell you thank you because we know there had not been fire on our side, God. Truly, we would have been devoured by the enemy, God. But thank you, God, for what you have done, God. Thank you how the angels watched over us, God. Thank you for giving us peace, oh, most shy. God, thank you. Oh, most I tell you, God, we are truly grateful on today, God. And God, we just pray, God, that you just saturate, saturate the atmosphere, God. Let it be conducive for you to move, oh, most shata. Touch your people, God. Oh, God, every state, every country, God, every continent, oh, God, every island, God, every valley, every mountain. Wherever your people reside, God, God, we pray that you touch them, God. You know what they need, God. You know the state of mind, God. Lift up, bow down heads, God. Remove the confusion, God. Bless and the mess, God, because only you can, God. You have the answer, God, to every problem, God, to every situation. There's nothing too hard for you, God. Hey, God, we just say thank you because we believe you, God. Oh, God, you're the God of manna. Sit it down, God. Sit it down. Oh, my shot. Sit it down, God. You're the God that asks about fire. And, God, we say thank you in advance, Father, in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. He's good. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Oh, give thanks, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is. 
to me been good to me been good to me been good to me he's been good to me been good to me he's been good to you been good to me he's been good been good he's been good he's been good been good been good show no good show no good he's been good been good he's been good he's been good he's been good yeah been good oh give thanks unto the Lord, Lord for, for he has it been good, good to y'all week long yes, oh give thanks oh, oh you washed over us Lord, you kept us Lord for, for you're good yes, he is he's good. worthy worthy, 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 worthy for, for he, for he is good. yes he is yes he is my good. God is worthy Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hand again for Jesus. How many know he's worthy? And anybody expecting a miracle? You know what you want God to do? He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. I'm expecting my miracle any day now. Whatever you need him to do. He's that kind of God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm expecting my miracle any day now, any day now. I'm expecting my miracle any day now, any day now. Say it again. I'm expecting my miracle any day now, any day now. I shall have what I need any day now. Any day now, by faith, by faith is coming to me. Any day now, any day now. Come on, say, I'm expecting, I'm expecting my miracle. You know what you want God to do. Any day now, any day now. Any day now. Oh, I'm expecting. I'm expecting my any day now, any day now, it could be all tonight. Any day, yeah, now. I'm expecting, I'm expecting my miracle. Any day, any, any day, day now, now, any day now, I shall have, have what, I what I need. Any day now, any day, now. say it again, I shall. I shall have what I need any day now, any day now. My faith is coming to me any day now, any day now. Say I'm expecting, I'm expecting my miracle. Any day now, any day, hey, I'm expecting my miracle. I'm expecting my miracle. Any day now, any keep saying day it. Now. Keep saying it. Any day hey, now. I expect my wisdom. I'm expecting my Oh, my oh. healing coming to me. Any day now. Hey, my finances is blessed. My now. children are I'm expecting, I'm expecting my miracle. Any day now, any day it now. can come to 
to my, my miracle any day now 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 any day now. Any day already now. asked for so i expect i expect in my miracle any day now any day now one more time i'm expecting i expect in my miracle any day now any day now Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. As the praise and worship team said, I'm expecting my miracle any day. You know, it could be today. It could be tomorrow, the next day. But I'm expecting my miracle. So you got to be expecting. Yeah, I believe a, a, a woman, when she, when, she, when she get ready to have a baby, I believe the woman is ready to be pushing some something out amen because she's expecting she look expecting amen she protruding amen something is getting ready to happen look at your neighbor and say i'm protruding so something get ready to happen amen we give honor to god first of all in our life we thank god for our lovely wife uh, Vengeance Hatley, amen, and uh, Pastor Thompson in her absence, amen, the angel of this house. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for her in her absence because we love her, and I know everybody out there love her. Let's give a hand clap for her, amen. Praise God because she's a woman of God, amen. We welcome all of you today, amen, at New Beginning Christian Faith Center. Amen. We hope everybody out on the internet is having a good time fellowshipping with us. Amen. But we're going to continue our series on the armor of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the armor of God. Amen. I believe there are seven pieces of that armor. Amen. I'm going to name them out for you. Truth. Breath, pray to righteousness, gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and praying in the spirit. Amen. I believe we have already talked about the truth. Amen. The truth shall make you free. You know, when we, when we, when we know the truth, it can make us free. Amen. Let us know how we got free. Amen. Do you know how you got free? Do you know how God bless you to be able to be free? Amen. Something about being free, amen, that can do something for you. Amen. Today we're going to start on the second piece of the, of the armor of God. Notice I said the armor of God because it belongs to him. It, all of this is God's armor. Amen. I believe when we get the armor of God on, we're going to be fine. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm fine right now. I have God's armor on. Amen. You put God's armor on, you'd be fine. It said, I'm going to read the scripture again. Finally, finally mean after a long time, after a long time, not a small, short time, but after a long time, my brethren, and it's also talking about our sister, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. 
It said, put on the whole armor of God. So you underline that. Of God. It's not my armor. It's not your armor. So I hear people say, I'm going to pull off. No, I'm not pulling nothing off. That belongs to God. Amen. When I get in that, I'm going to stay in that. Put on the whole arm of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we, now pay attention to verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against principalities, against powers, against Powers, I keep saying that twice, these women, against the rulers, those are the levels, the rulers of darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, amen, breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots, all the fiery dots of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying, praying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance. And supplication for all saints. The army is not just for you. It's for your, your family, your friends, your children, your co-workers, all the people around. You know, say, for all saints. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going to go up here, and I want you, that you have your Bibles, I want to let you know this is God's armor. So, we're going to go out of the Old Testament and show you he, he had his armor in the Old Testament. Amen. And the breastplate of righteousness was over there in Isaiah 59 and verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. Underline that. He put on righteousness as a breastplate. And held men of salvation upon his head and put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak in the biblical account here. We're talking about the breastplate is something that, the, that, that is used for judgment. But also, normally, they talk about the breastplate for shielding the vital organs like your lungs and so forth. But I'm going to bring you what the Bible talks about out of the Old Testament which is talking about judgment. Amen. That breath prey is for judgment. Amen. It says the breath prey is something uh, used as judgment because of the Urim and Thundum was placed within it. Y'all know what the Urim and Thundum is? That's, that's the two stones placed on there. When you rub them, they would turn and light up. But only you, if, if God wanted to speak, he would speak to them through the Urim and Thundum, which was placed on the breastplate. Let's look also at Exodus chapter 28, 23. And thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on two ends of the breastplate. I want, you so, I want you to see this mark, this car. This is the main revelation here because it's used for judgment. And thou shalt put two rhythms, chains of gold in the two rings, which are the, on the ends of the breastplate. And the 
two ends of the two brethren chain, thou shalt fasten the two unches and put them on the shoulder piece of the ephod before it. And thou shalt make two rings of gold, shall put them on the end of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod. Inward, and two rings of gold that shall make, and shall put them on the two sides of the ephod, underneath towards the forepart thereof, against the other coupling thereof, above the curtain's grave and the, of the ephod, and they shall bind the breastplate by the rings thereof into the ring of the ephod, in a lace of blue, that it may be above the curtain girl of the ephod and the breastplate be loosed for the, from the ephod. And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. When he goes in into the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continuously. So you see, the priests had to wear the breastplate. The breastplate was there for judgment. And the Bible was letting us know that the judgment has to be done because you have to be able to discern, be able to judge between what? Good and evil. So you will not allow anything to come into your spirit or your heart that would damage you. You got to be able to discern, amen, got to be able to know between right and wrong. The Urim of Thundam was on there, amen. The, the ephod, when they got in trouble, amen, they would rub it and they would ask God in critical situations. But Paul tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is compared to the breastplate worn by the high priest in Judaism. Why? Does the high priest wear a breastplate? The high priest does not fight in war. So his breastplate is not to protect him of the apostles in the New Testament. Amen. Paul was saying it's there for judgment. The one who was most learned. He was, Paul was learned. When he came out with the scripture, he understood exactly what the breastplate of righteousness represent. It was, uh, it was not just for protection. It was a symbol of authority to bring judgment. Let's look at a couple of places in the scripture to confirm what I'm saying. Psalms 15, 6. The heavens shall declare his righteousness, for God is, is judge himself. Psalm 72. He shall judge the people with righteousness and die poor with judgment. All these scriptures confirm what righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness is there for judgment. Amen. In order for you to be able to know what's going on, the verse uh, of uh, 98 and 9 said, Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth, and righteousness shall be he shall he judge the world and the people with equality. In other words, God going to use the breastplate, the righteousness to judge. And we ought to carry that breastplate. We ought to have it on. Amen. When we put the breastplate on, amen, we're able to look and see things. A lot of people think you should not be able to judge between right or wrong. But you need to be able to judge between right or wrong. You need to be able to set things in order that is not in order. If you know something is wrong, amen. Amen. You need to correct it and give the correct place where it should be done. Amen. In order for you to do that, you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Jeremiah 33 and 15 said, in those days, and at that time, will I cause the breach of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. Revelation 19 and 11 said, And I saw the heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. The righteousness he, he and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. Job 29 and 14 said, I put 
own righteousness and I clothed myself with judgment. I was clothed with a robe and a dot diam. And the reason the high priest wore the breastplate righteousness, he wore it because he was the highest authority of judgment. When you carry the highest authority of judgment, amen, then you know you can be able to execute certain things, be able to discern between right and wrong. You'll be able to know what is right and you'll know what is wrong. In, in other words, you see things like they're supposed to be. Judging is one of the most misunderstood things in the Christian life and doctrine. There are two main words there that talks about the judging in Greek, amen, diakorin and korin as a Christian, we're told not to judge nobody, stand in judgment, which is pointing, which they said you shouldn't point out sin and you shouldn't correct it, but you should. You should be able to point out sin. You should be able to judge things in order to do it right. That means that by I would say rebuke and reprove, but we, we are not to apply punishment. We are to rebuke and reprove, but we are not to apply punishment. Let, let's read here what Christ says about judging. Let's look at it carefully. Judge not that ye be judged. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measures you meet, it shall be measured unto you. In other words, whatever you judge people with, God is going to judge you with it. So in other words, word when you see something wrong it's not judging but you are actually setting stuff in order sin is sin then you correct it rebuke it reprove it but don't give no what punishment God is the one to give punishment we're not wrestling with flesh and blood we're not here with, to put somebody in a hole that's is not our job but we should be able to discern between good and evil. We should be able to see what is right. We should be able to see what is wrong and then be able to correct it. He said whatever you judge somebody else with that's what's going to be judged with on you. Amen. So a lot of people forget that. They forget that when they point their finger. Are they judging somebody? Amen. God going to take that same thing and judge you with the same measure. In other words you don't, you're not going to get by when you judge somebody else. But you're going to be able to be able to see, amen, when you judge somebody, Christ is going to also do that. Christ is pointing out here in that scripture that with the same type of measure of judgment you show to others, God is going to input to you. When he brings judgment against you, the verse is, is, this verse is very important for a believer because we judge in it the way God judges. God judges us and he chastises us for walking into iniquity. So we can as believers understand what the breastplate of righteousness is. The breastplate of righteousness is there to be able to keep you on line, praise God, so you can be able to do what you need to do. When you begin to pray for your sisters and your brothers, amen, because you are standing in line with the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, breastplate of righteousness is faith and love. Amen. If you don't have faith and love together, then you can't wear the breastplate of righteousness. But if you got faith and love, then you're able to wear it. You're able to pray for somebody that is in sin. You're able to go in and call down uh, call down the powers of God uh, to bring forth healing, uh, to bring deliverance. Uh, but if you're not in the right standard uh, and you're not having the good breastplate of righteousness on, you don't even have the right uh, to pray for somebody that's sick huh? because you don't have love. Huh? You don't have faith. Huh? Faith plus love is judgment. Huh? Come on tell God thank you. Huh? You put on the breastplate of righteousness. Huh? That's where you can go in huh? and walk with God. Huh? You can be able to preach. Huh? You can be able to witness. Huh? You can be able to speak to people. Huh? But if you don't wear that breastplate of righteousness, huh? you don't even have authority. Huh? You don't even have a right huh? to try uh, and pray for somebody uh, that got sickness uh, somebody that's in sin uh, because you don't have love uh, plus faith uh, is the righteousness uh, amen it's the judgment uh, it is the breath pray uh, when you wear the breath pray uh, you have authority in the spirit uh, that's what you indicate authority uh, to judge uh, if we are instructed not to judge others uh, what did we actually do uh, our fight uh, is not against flesh 
flesh and blood, but it's the arm of God up against those that are against you. The purpose of the arm of God is to enable us to stand against Satan King, which is fighting against us. We can bring condemnation against Satan's kingdom. Yes, we can. The Bible said in Isaiah 54 and, 4, 54 and 15, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not one of them, but not no, what, not against me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall by the sword. The Bible said, Behold, I create the smith that blows the coal in the fire. See, the smith is a man that take iron and turn it into weapons. God said he created him to blow across the coals a fire to bring forth an instrument for his work. He said, I've created the world, the waste to be destroyed. The Bible said, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn this. This is the heritage of the service of the Lord. When you are walking according to God, according to his will, you have authority to bring judgment against the forces of evil to come against you and those that you intercede for. The Bible said no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. In other words, God has set up something. We're not fighting against each other. We're fighting against spirits. So you come against the spirit, not the person. Come against the spirit that that's in the individual. That's what Jesus did. He said, get hence behind me, Satan, for you cares not for the things of the world. Jesus had his breath of righteousness. He walked in it. He had authority. So when he walked up to a blind man, he spoke to him out of his righteousness, out of the breath plate. He judged that sin. He judged that sickness and cast it out. Faith plus love equal righteousness. If you're not operating in these two, then you have no authority to rebuke the enemy. First Thessalonians verse chapter 5 and verse 8. But let us who of the day be sober putting on the breath of faith and love. That's where I got that from out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 he said let us who are in the day be sober putting on the breath rate of faith and love and for hell meant a hope of salvation when we put love and faith on it equal righteousness it's the breath rate if you're not operating in these two then you don't have no authority to rebuke the enemy. You're not working against each other. You're working against spirits. Spirits that come against you. You have the authority to intercede for your friends, your loved ones. You have authority to pray for forgiveness of sin for your friends, for your loved ones. The breath of the righteousness had a lot of authority and power uh, to put it on. Uh, take a believer uh, to truly walk uh, in faith uh, and love. Uh, now let me uh, plainly tell you uh, the secret uh, of this breath rate. Uh, it empowers you uh, to intercede uh, for the one uh, who cannot fight uh, for themselves. Uh, the high priest, uh, the high priest uh, was a guard uh, over the widow
widows and the fatherless and the strangers. He was to be an instrument of righteousness in the land to protect the weak from those who would oppress them. He would stand in the gap to bring the people into judgment, the mercies of God. God let us know the princes, they were rebellious, the companions of thieves. Everyone loved gifts. They followed after reward. But God set the priests in order to judge the fatherless and the widows. Therefore, the Lord said, and he said, the mighty one of Israel, I will ease me of my adversary. I take a vengeance on your enemy when you were the breath of righteousness. He'll take charge and no weapon will be able to stop you. He didn't say it wasn't going to be formed. They can form them, but they won't be able to stop you. They will not be able to hurt you because you carry the breath of righteousness. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 27 says Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and how converts those the one that you witness to with righteousness when you operate in faith and love you can petition Christ for other ones for ones to come in Christ you can pray the word the word is your word because it becomes your word because you speak it it becomes your word you walk in it the Bible said if you abide in me and my word abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you he said hereafter the father shall be glorified you shall bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples God said you will be able to witness to those that are out on the street because you walking in righteousness you're walking in love and faith you can tell them your testimony you can tell them how you got saved you can tell them that you was an eyewitness because you were there when you got saved if you keep my commandments he said abide in me in love even as I kept my father commandments and abide in love he said these things have I spoken unto you that your joy might remain in you come on tell God thank you put on God's righteousness which is the breath rate the breath rate keep it on don't take it off walk in it stand in it he said greater love has no man that this way he lay down his life for his friends the Bible let us know there's a time come now you got to seek his place you got to stay with God because the time is getting rough God is coming he's talking to his people he's walking in the earth stand up put on the arm of God finding my brother and sister be strong in the Lord put on the whole arm of God that you might be able stand and the Bible said you got to stand with your breath rate you got to stand with the arm of God don't take it off keep it on the disciples the disciples they had to wear the arm of God and with this arm you'll be able to defeat the devil you're not worrying about flesh and blood you're worrying about the spirit that is behind them talk to the spirit if it's a spirit of lying speak to the spirit of lying it's the spirit of adultery speak to that spirit it's not the human being but it's a spirit back there he said they're high they're spiritual highs up there in the high spirit people up there 
Did somebody tell God, thank you? The devil, he got layers. He got spirits that are in different layers. We got to work with them. We got to call those spirits what they are. Call those things that are not as though they are. Don't staggle with the promises of God. Keep on the arm of God as I get ready to close. The Bible tells me that we, he looked for a man. He sought for a man. He was looking for somebody to stand in the gap to protect his people from defilement. He was, his wrath was against sin. God looked for a godly man. He was searching the earth. He was looking for somebody that could put on the armor, stand in the gap. Don't be a fool. You can stand in the gap. You can stand in it. God is giving you the authority. He's giving you the weapon. God has looked for somebody. He's looking now for another man. He's looking for another woman that can stand in the gap. He's looking for somebody that can put on the face, put on this breastplate and stand before him and call on the name of the Lord and rebuke the demon spirits to bring them down. Somebody tell God, thank you. Stand in the wall. Stand on the wall. God looking for somebody to stand on the wall in their house. If it take praying, praying in tongues, you have to pray for hours. You pray. Don't stop. Because Jude said, pray in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Put on the breastplate and stand before God. God want a man and a woman who can humble themselves and be merciful and go into the spirit realm and repent and go before him. Pray for somebody that got sin in their life. Say, God, I know they're walking in sin, but I'm calling on your anointing, your breath rate. I want your breath rate to be on me. I'm going in battle for that soul. I'm going to stay there until they come out. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to pray for them. If I have to pray all night, I'm going to stay there. I won't give up. Somebody tell God, thank you. I'm praying for those that out there drunk, homongers. I'm praying for God to bring them out. I'm praying that God will bring them out. I know some of y'all might be listening to me, but I'm praying for you. I'm praying. I'm not condemning you, but I'm praying for you. I'm going in the spirit realm and cry out. Say, Lord, what must they do to be saved? God will let me know. Come on, tell God thank you. David was a man after God's own heart. And he was truly thankful. He said, I wash my hands in the innocence and go before your altar, O Lord, and proclaim out loud your praise, telling of all your wondrous deeds. Talk about how God did these things for you. That's what they want to know. They want to know what God did in your life. And if you can tell them, that can serve as a, if you did it for them, do it for me. And I close with praise God. I'd like to pray for everyone that's out there and the ones that are here. Going before the Lord. Father, I approach this throne right now. I humble myself before your throne. I give you praise, God. I know, God, that there are somebody out there. And we're praying for that person right now to have them come into the love and faith with you. We call on them in right now. We call on them in, God. Go out, God. Send the Holy Ghost out like a hound dog. And put them on their trail, God. Walk them down, God, and bring them in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind the spirits that hold them. Somebody is frustrated. 
Somebody finally have come to the end. They don't know what to do now. But God, I hope they hear my voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit right now. I take authority over it in Jesus' name. And I disconnect it from them by the power of the blood of Jesus. And I call forth your Holy Ghost God, your spirit to come over them and deal with them. And cause them to come in, God, in the name of Jesus. Cause them to repent, God. And receive you into their life. I believe it right now. There's somebody. Somebody God is accepting you right now. Somebody's being touched by you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I can see somebody right now. Person that has been going through. Has been going through and God just loose you. He just loose you right now. He's loosing you right now to be free. To come into the house of God and give him praise. I believe you, God, and I thank you right now. I see another one, amen, as the Holy Ghost is showing me. There's some healing right now for the individual, amen, been going to the doctor, amen, right now, God. Heal them, God, in the name of Jesus. Send healing, God, in seven days, God, we're going to see a complete deliverance over. And we give you praise right now. We decree it, and we declare it right now through the power of the Holy Ghost right now. I see another one, amen, that has a high... Blood pressure, amen. The doctor has done all they could do, but it won't come down. But God is bringing it down right now. God is bringing it down like a temperature. He's bringing it down in the name of Jesus. We decree it and we declare it right now. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Amen. We thank you in Jesus' name. We thank everyone, amen, that had tuned in to New Beginnings, Christian Faith Center, where the pastor is, Geraldine Thompson. Amen. We thank God. Give God a hand clap as we close.